Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2, the Sea Turtle Cove Challenge. And we are here to celebrate the fact that you guys have done it! Oh my goodness! I had no idea there would be so much support to help clean up our beaches. We got every single piece of trash off of our beach. I am so excited you guys. Sea Turtle Cove is looking better than ever thanks to you guys. We were able to pick up all of those plastic bottles, all of those trash wrappers, and you guys gave enough support we'll be able to put in eight trash cans today so i'm really excited about that because there are no trash cans over here in fact <gasps> you're not a yes oh my goodness well we can clean these pieces of trash up at least because it's on the boardwalk here and we are ready to add in some trash cans so we can at least add those in but there have been some interesting developments here in sea turtle cove it seems that even the jellyfish are becoming quite sick because there is a lack of food and there was a huge storm so the beach is still littered but this time it's littered with a bunch of sticks and there's rocks and it looks like what happened is a huge storm hit upstream i'm gonna get away from the uh flushing toilets as we discuss this but further up the coast or down the coast i should say oh my gosh they've already started making such a huge mess here I can't believe this, but further up the coast, there was a gigantic storm and it blew through some of the coastal forest and actually uprooted a whole bunch of trees and sent them sprawling down our way. And we have kind of caught the debris here in the cove. So we no longer have all of the filthy trash, as you can start seeing is showing up on the ground here on the beach, but we do have some new items of trash, some car tires and a whole bunch of empty plastic barrels. I don't know what's inside those barrels, so I might be a little bit worried about that and a whole bunch of trees and rocks so it seems like there's like gigantic logs and tree trunks everywhere and that's gonna have to be something that we think about because today is the first day that you guys are going to vote in a straw poll and decide where we are going to put the first chunk of our research funds but before we start talking about our research funds and how that's going to work ah so much trash to still pick up before we start talking about research funds and all of that, we're going to get the trash cans in. Because thanks to your support by leaving likes on the last video, we got eight trash cans! Huzzah! That's so many! I don't think we're ever going to need to worry about trash again once we get the trash cans in here. So let me just go ahead. Trash cans! Yeah! Let's pick some really cool ones because I can't believe you guys managed to pick eight of them. So there's the Paradise trash can. And you can let me know in the comments which one you think is best. So we'll actually put them down to compare. And then if you guys are like, no, that one's even better. There's the extinct trash can, which I think is kind of cool because it's got like a whole bunch of twigs on it. So it's almost like you gathered up the uh, the driftwood and you kind of put it here. But that's kind of this is kind of driftwoody and it's got pretty flowers on it. I wonder if we spend our research money on beautifying the area if we can get more tourists. And with more tourists, we might be able to get a bonus in funding. So again, we'll talk about all of that cool stuff in just a minute. Then there's this trash can, which is actually like the sea trash can because it has like seashells on the side and it's got all sorts of ferns and everything on it. So yeah, if you see one, this is the underwater trash can that's meant to be kind of like a, a fancy whale head. So if you know which one you really think would be great for this area, and then there's recycling bins. So we'll put down at least a couple recycling bins and a few trash cans. Then let me know, I think, and there's even just like your normal, there's a Chinese trash can if you want to go for that one. A uh, like wire trash can, the jungle trash can, the safari trash can. There's the Arabian Nights trash can. Oh gosh, we've become more famous because we have trash cans. People are like, yes, trash cans! There's also the endangered species trash cans. Let me put that one down, even though it seems a little odd, and just show them to you guys. The, the woman has just walked into the trash can, but this one's very pretty, so we might be able to improve the way Turtle Cove looks with like this gecko-y trash can. But yeah, let me know which one. I know that seems weird, but let me know which one you guys actually like as your favorites, and we'll try to make sure we incorporate those into our beach, because you're going to affect everything and how this beach is going to turn out and how it's all going to look in the end. So for now, I'm personally going to go with kind of a mix between the Paradise trash cans, which we'll put right here, and the normal trash can which this kid just used thank you so much kid and we're gonna make sure that we have at least eight of them because you have been amazing people and you have gotten eight trash cans added in oh, look at all this trash I can't believe this so let's see how many do we have now one two three and then we also need to go ahead and get recycling bins recycling bins actually behave differently than trash cans so we'll make sure we have at least a couple recycling bins next to these pieces so we'll put them like right over here 
Uh, we might have to thank you guys. Should we spend money on guest like facilities and add more educational like kiosk or even hire an educator to work here? Should we spend money on hiring maintenance staff so we don't have to be the ones to come down and clean up all this trash? Should we spend money on like binoculars? Basically what you're going to start seeing and let me count trash cans again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have a couple more. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and maybe put like seven eight i think we'll put seven and eight right over here by the entrance just to really drive home hey everybody don't bring your trash into this area and then we can move them around as needed and let's go ahead and sweep up what trash remains that i can reach i'm stuck i'm stuck i got stuck behind the gift cart that startled me oh my goodness but yeah, so here is how it's going to work, you guys. Every time we come and we work in Sea Turtle Cove from now on, I'll have to get those later. They're stuck under the bench. What are you doing, sir? We just have eight trash cans. Well, six trash cans and two recycling bins for a reason, you know. But every time we come to work in Sea Turtle Cove, you guys are going to be voting. Oh my gosh, these terrible people. Maybe we do need to hire maintenance. You're going to be voting on where we spend the funding money that we get for Sea Turtle Cove. How much spending, like spending, spending money, how much spending money and research money that we get for Sea Turtle Cove may be directly related to how many likes the video gets because that's really one of the few ways we have to kind of show community interaction. So I apologize if that seems grabby. You don't have to do it if it does. It's just literally one of the few ways we actually have to engage the community because so many of you guys aren't even allowed to comment because I know our age group is in that range so that's why i do it if you feel uncomfortable with that go ahead and speak up and we can totally figure something else out but i think it worked out great because you guys left 860 likes last time and that was enough to clean up every single piece of trash on the beach i was so proud of everyone and it almost made me cry because i was looking at all of the trash and i was like this is a person who would pick it up and this is a person who would actually pick up this real life trash on a beach if they were there and it was really a cool feeling so thank you all so much for that oh my gosh trash down here too rude people rude 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 now that you guys have helped me to unlock the trash cans we can actually start cleaning up after them but you guys are going to help decide how much research funding we get each time by leaving likes about 100 likes will be a boost in research funding and how what quantity of items we're able to get so say if there were like 200 then that might be two deliveries of reefs that we could add into the water to build up the coral reefs or if it was like seven like hundred for like we got 800 last time so really that's not that's not hard to think about but if it was say 700 one time and we were researching dolphins that might mean that we get seven dolphins imported into the cove so that's how that will work and then how we spend our research funding is going to be in the straw poll and you're going to help me decide are we going to spend it on guest facilities because as you can see we have a lot of people here and one of the things we need to do is work on getting to a five star a five star park and if we do that that will really give a huge boost in funding if we can be in five stars then as long as we have five stars it'll give us an extra boost to what kind of uh, animals we get it'll give us an extra boost to how much we're able to get for um, like if you guys voted like I said on the dolphins if we're at five stars then we'll be able to get like a whole bunch of extra dolphins or things for the dolphins if we're at five stars and you vote on seabirds we'll be able to get bonus seabirds on top of what you guys support so it really helps us grow that way. So that would be really cool. And as you can see, it looks like our guests are kind of bored. So that's something to consider. But there's going to be all sorts of unique opportunities as our environment shifts and changes as we add in more animals. Even the jellyfish right now, you guys, are starving. So if we want to add in sea turtles and other animals, we need to make sure that they would be able to survive here. So should we spend our next research funding cleaning up all of these mysterious plastic barrels? Or do you think we should just ignore them because everything is starving to death? The nothing is living. Not even the jellyfish are living because there's no fish to eat. There's no fish fish there's no seaweed if we want to support our populations of turtles then they need something to eat right so whatever you guys pick you might pick uh putting in the aquatic vegetation then that might supply some food for our sea turtles so i'll show you guys what i mean if you voted on aquatic vegetation then we would be able to add in a whole bunch of uh different aquatic plants seaweed would be able to be added in and then as a result when we decide to spend our funding on getting say the sea turtle then she would have some food to eat but keep in mind you could vote on the sea turtle now she's going to be in there in the straw poll so you could vote on adding her in now but what happens if she has no food 
if we haven't put in the aquatic vegetation and created that bottom layer to the very important ecosystem, she's going to starve to death. But I'm going to leave that in your guys' hands. And if you end up voting on like building up the artificial or the, the coral reef first, then we might have some seaweed that just kind of shows up on its own because of the artificial reefs that we would make to encourage coral reefs to naturally grow. So there's that. And then we may want to decide that we're concerned about all of these logs. What happens if we ignore things? What happens if we ignore the fact that guests are peeing everywhere? <laughs> like they really are. What happens if we ignore their happiness? What happens if we ignore that the jellyfish are starving because there's no fish? What happens if we ignore these barrels? What happens if we ignore these branches? There's branches everywhere now. What happens if we ignore them? Will it be something good or will it be something bad? Because as you can see, there's car tires. So do we ignore the car tires and the plastic barrels? Do we spend our research funding cleaning it up? Do we ignore these rotting logs full of insects? Like, is that something we want on our beach? And the question, the answers to those questions may surprise you. So think carefully about how each of these items might affect an ecosystem and how we're kind of starting with a bit of a blank slate because everything has died, more or less. Even our jellyfish are dying. But if we were going to add fish, what would the fish eat? So you have to kind of work your way up in thinking what would be the best use of our money and our funds right now. Is it going to be on education? Is it going to be on expanding guest facilities? Is it going to be on cleaning up the beaches of the mysterious barrels? Do we want to mess with these branches? It's going to be kind of interesting to see what you guys pick. So I'm really excited about that. And I know this has been another one of the like kind of run around explaining everything episodes, but it'll pick up once we start really seeing what your choices are going to be. So yeah, lots and lots of branches. Oh, and then I'll show you guys the further side of the beach because there was trash everywhere over here. It was so sad. There was just trash all over the place. We have more rotting logs. There's rotting logs full of insects sprinkled all over the place now. I mean, look, there's some over here too, and there's more rotting logs over here. There's more mysterious barrels over here, but as you can see, we do have some land-based vegetation. So it's not like this place is completely like ruined. There is quite a bit of land-based vegetation, even if it has mysterious barrels sprinkled in it now. Don't know what might be in those. And then there's all sorts of, oh, I mean, it's just so pretty. So there is a tidied up clean beach and at least it's not full of plastic shards and fragments anymore that are going to provide like a terrible food. Ah, there's a few pieces I missed. See, there's so much of it that I'm still picking it up. But don't worry, you guys definitely, definitely left enough support that I'll pick all of that up. Don't worry. Yeah, there's a little dodo rock, uh, a little bit more trash I need to clean up and the trash may come back too. So if we don't hire like a beach crew, to provide maintenance for the beach and the beachfront, then we may not be able to keep the trash from coming back because it's not like beach trash is a one-time thing. It's always being added. So yeah, this is going to be an extremely organic living area and how it lives, how it thrives, what we decide to focus on cleaning up, what we decide to focus on trying to add in, what we research, what we study, the creatures that show up here are going to be completely in your hands. And I'm so excited and so nervous about that. And that's also why we got the question of when are we going to have more Sea Turtle Cove? They're probably going to show up every couple of days just to make sure everybody has a chance. But if we just get a lot of support and excitement and it's very clear who the overarching winner is going to be, then I might go ahead and make like a bonus episode a little bit faster so that'll come up too i'm really excited even if i'm really sad because everything's dead and now our beach is full of these branches and I, do we want those branches there you're probably going to need to talk to other people in comments and figure out is it okay to have a decaying log on a beach or is that a bad thing how's it going to affect the beach what kind of animals would be chased away or show up if these things are here so those are some good questions to have and you are we worried about the barrels are we going to ignore the barrels do we need to focus on putting in some fish like adding in some fishery research because we're losing all of our jellyfish and thornback rays and even our lampreys are dying because there's no food or should we focus on a vegetation because what are the fish going to eat if we add the fish in but where would the fish live do we need to focus on adding in a coral reef first so yeah it's going to be in your guys hands what goes down and our guests have a need for more bathrooms and they're really bored and so they're probably going to be giving us some bad reviews about the sea turtle cove but then there's some plus size like sides to this because we do have some sections of this area that's protected and you can see the plants are really thriving and they're looking absolutely amazing and beautiful and and yeah, so there we go, you guys. It's time for research and what that research is and what you think the most important thing to either ignore 
or to add into the water is, or if it's the guest, if it's hiring like a maintenance crew, if it's feeding the guests because they're starving, if it's hiring a maintenance crew to take care of the beach because we might end up with more beach trash every time and need help cleaning that up. Like your, your likes might end up going to having to clean up beach trash instead of being able to go towards extra funding. So that's something that might happen. So yeah, just think about what you think would be the best way to take care of this pretty much empty water that has nothing in it. Is it taking care of the land or the water first? Is it taking care of the fish or the coral reef first? Is it the aquatic plants? Is it just adding in a turtle and crossing your fingers and hoping for the best? Well, we'll have to see. There are jellyfish and there are species of turtle that would just eat jellyfish. So do think about that. Oh, and then I will show you guys just so you know what the needs of each of the turtles are really quickly. Green sea turtle, her needs are primarily seaweed. And then she does like having some coastal rock formations and some clam bubblers. And if we had clams in, we would need to have a healthy reef bed in order to have the clams successfully be here. And she does like having kelp beds. So if she has kelp beds, she'll have a place to rest and she'll come and crawl up onto the beach to lay her eggs. Remember the overarching goal of the challenge is not only to get to five stars, but to have at least a hundred baby sea turtles born in our park. So that's another huge thing. And look at how many people there are. Look at how many people. Oh my gosh, look at how much trash, you terrible people. Ah, it's because we're already overflowing on the trash cans, you guys. Ah, oh, so we'd have to slow down. We'd, we'd end up having to stop here and like clean this up all of the time. I can't believe this. Oh my goodness. So that's a problem that could happen. But yeah, she would need seaweed if we're talking the green sea turtle. She would need a healthy reef bed so that she would have a clam bubbler to play with. And she would need a kelp bed in order to provide some shelter for her. So that's the green sea turtle. And some of the other ones that might show up here that you guys would be voting and picking to add in. Also, you might be able to see research for dolphins and other marine mammals sneak in there. The sea turtles are not the only things that might show up, but it's up to you guys if you want to like drag the challenge out and add in a ton of dolphins and what happens if you add in dolphins but don't support the sea turtles do they shut down funding after a while we just have to see there's sharks if we added in a shark would that decimate our sea turtle population there's also leatherback sea turtles so leatherbacks are another one we could add in and they eat primarily jellyfish so we have several jellyfish so you could vote on adding a leatherback in now and just crossing your fingers and seeing how she'd do but the jellyfish are dying off because they don't have enough to eat they don't have enough fish to eat and and there's no healthy coral reef for her to be able to have clam bubblers so she wouldn't be enriched and would probably get very sick so you need to take your decisions on what you vote for very very seriously and that's why i suggest doing some research on these animals doing uh, a little bit of talking in the comment section with everybody to see how things would go what you'd pick yeah the flatback sea turtle needs those reef formations as well for its enrichment and it actually needs shellfish so again that healthy like ocean bed that healthy reef bed so it would have shellfish to eat also a few jellyfish and then we might even see like these artificial reefs so if we build up the coral reef then those food sources might naturally show up anyway and the olive ridley which is going to be another one of your seaweed eaters and in real life some of these species are a little bit more flexible on what they eat but that's just kind of what we have to work with to host as examples of what might show up so all right guys and there's a young child. Do we need to hire a lifeguard? Apparently that is now a real, um, a real question. So do we need to hire a lifeguard to save the children? Well, there we go. All right. And we'll have to see what you guys pick and where the future of our wonderful zoo, or I should say our wonderful rescue park cove, <laughs> our sea turtle area ends up going. So it's in your hands and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.